Yeah, Weed Show, we're back. And what I mean by back is we had an episode of the show one year ago. What's up, Cowie folks? Uh, a year ago, we were here at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. This is an actual stone from the Rome Coliseum. Now, I actually got to go there a couple years ago, thanks to the fine folks at Red Bull KTM who flew me out to Tony Caroli's retirement party uh, two years ago. And I got to see how amazing Rome actually was or still is. And this is maybe the closest we get to a stadium like that. When you start seeing this place up close, and the marble columns. This is the famous peristyle, the artwork. Uh, it is a very European style. And what I mean by that is when you go to Europe, when you go to a place like Rome, you can tell that when they were the kings of the world, when they had all the money and all the power, well, there weren't a lot of things to spend money on. So just build really nice buildings. What else are you gonna do in like the year 100? So their buildings still hold up today, not just literally, but figuratively. They're still like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe how amazing these buildings look. And these buildings are a thousand years old. So this is a very small version of that, the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum, which was built to somewhat mimic that. And as far as American history goes, it's about as deep as you can go for a stadium because this place, they started building it in 1918. And then they added a lot of other history because for Super Bowl, and most importantly for us, the Super Bowl of motocross, the first ever Supercross race, 1972. They didn't even call it Supercross yet. Won by a then 16-year-old Marty Tripes. I've always seen when you watch these races on TV, you see these peristyles and you're like, I know that there's something on it. There's plaques of somebody. So I can actually tell you what a lot of these plaques are. There's a John F. Kennedy plaque. Uh, there's a Nelson Mandela plaque. A lot of uh, great athletes and very important people. Mayors of uh, Los Angeles. This is a mayor who was here uh, to help bring the Olympic Games back in uh, 1984. They had two uh, Olympics here. We have the 1992 championship, which came down to the wire at the stadium between Jeff Stanton and uh, Damon Bradshaw. Thank you, Damon Bradshaw, for always owning that and allowing us to talk about one of the all-time title showdowns. That, this event this weekend, is designed to replicate where it's kind of winner take all. Whoever does best here wins a million dollars. And it's cool that Stanton and Bradshaw, Bradshaw is always from day one, from that day where he did not win the title by getting fifth on this racetrack, he always owned it. He didn't blame anything else. He didn't perform under pressure. Jeff Stanton did. They'll both be here at a bench race about that. <coughs> Excuse me, a bench race about that all weekend. So we have enough history but we don't have so much where it's no big deal to uh, come here. Gnarliest mom in the business, still going to every race. I was just stalling basically telling you the history of this building. There's uh, Pete Rozelle who was uh, the commissioner of the NFL for a long time. Bruce Springsteen plaque, Bruce Springsteen has a plaque because he sold 322,000 tickets during his Board in the USA tour back in the 1980s for I think four sold out shows in this ginormous stadium. So what I was trying to do was uh, get to the point where we could watch these riders hit the peristyle for the first time. I trapped myself. Look at that. Those are actual plaques from the 1932 Olympics. Like I said, as far as America goes, that's going pretty far back. We don't have thousands of year old things here. And now the moment you've been waiting for, let's watch some 250, as we call them, seated riders hitting the peristyle in anger. I gave them three laps, it's the fourth lap through. So now they're getting more aggressive. This leads right into a split lane. And by the way, we can talk about the amazing history of racing at the Coliseum, but don't forget the majority of that history was we couldn't touch the grass on the infield. And those 97, 98, the last couple times we were here, and the extra the riders are going to attack this and they did the previous lap and now everybody's cruising. Yeah, we had a lot of problems, but we're good now. I'm gonna keep it secret. So, 
Green is at least implying that he will be better here than he was in Chicago. Don't forget that he won the first photo of this SMX in Charlotte, so he's capable. And then, of course, everyone immediately starts wanting to talk about ghost rides, and he says, well, I got to win first, so let's just concentrate on that. Okay, Marshall, you a little rev there. Shout out to Kawasaki. That'll be 50th anniversary party tonight. I'll uh, hold the week show and I'll give you some footage of that 50th anniversary Kawasaki party. Got a lot of old school guys there. Uh, as the 450 guys get ready to attack the Peristyle, I just want to point out, I really enjoyed this one. I really enjoyed Charles Paddock, the world's fastest human from 1920 through 1928. Now that's a title. That's a title right there. Can we get like a fastest man on the planet, James Stewart Clack, and his actual year of when he was the fastest man on the planet? I like how that's official. Anyway, a uh, couple of things to note. Jet Lawrence, as you would expect, didn't really lean into last week's math mistake. He said he was asked at the press conference, uh, you know, is your week any different? There's been some criticism on social media, and he said, no, I'm just doing my deal during the week. I don't, I mean, it's very easy, I think, for the riders to just turn the boat off and not worry about that. I mean, what difference does it make for Jet tomorrow? What anyone was saying about him last week? Sorry, I just sneezed. I mean, if he rides well tomorrow night, he wins a million bucks. What difference does last week's perception of that make? I am afraid a little bit longer to lose Jet as a kind of out I feel like Aaron has proven that it can be done in the 450 class. You can't just say whatever and get away with it. Historically, the 450 division really saps the riders of any personality because anything they say can and will be used against them in the media and social media and by the fans, etc. So I'm hoping that Jen can stay relatively carefree based on the fact that he said something at the podium last week that led to a rich morning from the AMA. If, if, if Jen had said nothing, Roxon by more suddenly. Nothing would have come out of any of it. And uh, Roxon just said, uh, it kind of took away from what I thought could have been a badass way to win a race. You know, by passing and took away from that opportunity. But they were sitting right next to each other and that kind of squashed each other. Some real crap talk. And they all said, really, it doesn't matter. They've got to do what they need to do and execute to win the race, to win the money. talking about Chet, and while we're talking about Chase Keith right now, I want to mention that the week show is always by the dominant line of Honda CRF motocrossers. Can they keep this alive? Can they keep on winning everything? With Sexton and Chet, they've got great odds with two riders in the 450 class. We'll see if Hunter Lawrence can execute in the 250s, and Honda continuing to make winning look easy on the dominant CRF line. Go to your local Honda Power Sports dealer and see if you can ride as beautifully as Jet or as beautifully as Chase Sexton. Welcome back. We're going to wrap this show up with Kawasaki's 50th anniversary. Now, I'm bummed. I missed the big party. We were doing TV rehearsal. Man, tons of Kawasaki legends. They tried to get every single rider that had won titles for Kawasaki at this event. They had Jimmy Weiner there. They had Kudrowski and LaRocco and Ryan Hughes and Damon Huffman and Jeff Emig, Jeff Matasevich. Uh, they wanted to get RC and Stu. They were busy doing rehearsal. Also worth noting that Yamaha had a uh, debut of the all-new YC250F yesterday in their 50th anniversary colors. Uh, Triumph had bikes on the track today with RC and Jeff Stanton. Actually, RC tried to jump the finish line. It wasn't so pretty, but they went up and down the peristyle. My point is, uh, everybody's kind of taking this event and this SMX thing and trying to roll it all out together. The all-new Kawasaki KX450 is truly the bike that builds champion. Please welcome aboard the all-new 2024 Kawasaki KX450 with 16 AMA Super Motocross victories. The 2018 Monster Energy AMA Supercross Champion, Monster Energy Kawasaki's Jason Anderson. AMA 
Pro Motocross and 2019 Monster Energy Cup Champion, Monster Energy Kawasaki's Adam Sarencierulo. To celebrate this winning heritage, Kawasaki debuts the all-new 50th Anniversary Edition KX450. Written by two-time AMA 125cc champion with 14 SMX wins, including winning twice in the LA Coliseum, Kawasaki legend Jeff Matasevich. Wait a minute. Chicken. Let's wrap up this Cali party. Damon Huffman. You gotta go. Seriously, one of my favorites. One of my faves, though. Look, I know it's a Cali event, but the 95 number 12 Axel gear in a Suzuki. Really one of the best looks, I think, ever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. 95 was a great year. It was. Especially in Supercross. Yeah. You know, one thing. Yeah, but you could have won outdoors. Let's not forget. Oh, you were right close. in it. You were. You, you were. know, it was Kudrowski and I, we trained together. Yes. We lived near each other. Yep. And we. We rode in the heat, just out yes. in the desert. Yes. But uh, he helped me out a lot, for right. sure. Yeah, you were and gnarly. We're close. You were gnarly. I look back, I had no clue. I, I really led that series most of the year. Most, most of the way. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't even realize it. Yes. Okay, so this is cool, like how he did this. Yeah. You're recognizing. I mean, I didn't get to go to the thing. I was doing TV rehearsal, but there were a ton of you guys up there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Uh, a lot yeah. of fun. A lot yeah. of, I had four years at Cowie and yep. uh, two at the very end of my career with the off-road team. Uh, but those years, uh, 96, 97, 98, 99 were awesome. Yeah. I love the 96 KX, was one of my favorite bikes. Uh, and it was really weird just being, I went, from racing Rhino to like sitting beside him in the truck. Were you guys cool? Cause there was rivalry. Yeah. I was always wondering that. It it was odd. Yes. It was very awkward. Yes. But on the big bike, we never really had any run-ins. We okay. each kind of had our own performance out there. Yeah. Uh, and we got along fine. Yes. And we actually had some good times together. But when you first heard, oh, we're gonna be on the same, did you think like, ooh? Um. It, it was just real exciting times. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. You know, bringing the AXO thing up. I, I yeah. had that. I had the Honda deal. I heard. We had to wear yeah. Fox. Yep. Then the Cowie deal kind of blew the Honda deal away, and uh, Roy Turner was great back then. Yeah. Uh, good mentor and uh, really pulled the whole team together. But. I don't know. No regrets at all. Yeah. I loved the Cowie and had a lot of good times. Oh, um, 96, you're on it. Challenged yeah, Jeremy yeah. as a rookie. It was good. I did. I yes. had four, I have a great memory, four second place finishes oh. behind Jeremy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, uh, and a couple that kind of got away. Yeah. But uh, then I had one bad injury with tearing my ACL, but yeah. I always came back and performed and won races again. Yeah. Then, of course, winning 97 Atlanta was awesome. Yep. Then injured. Right then, after it, right? Yeah. Right after it. So that was kind of weird. You know, normally I didn't ride on Mondays. I raced Saturday, stayed up all night. Yes. Actually, I got to, I got to party with uh, Vanilla Ice Saturday night. When, after, and, after the win? Yeah, in Atlanta. Okay. okay. And a bunch of people. It was super yes. fun. Flew home late Sunday. Boom, Monday morning, outdoor testing on a 125. Okay. Uh, probably, probably not really smart. And that's what got you? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Broke my lower leg. So did you feel after that Atlanta one before you broke your lower leg? Okay, I'm figuring this out. I'm For rolling. Sure. Yes. And then yeah. I had a great, well, a, great, a good summer. Yeah. I had the, the big win over Ricky at Troy, at Troy In the heat? I was yep. always a little hot and cold. Yeah. You know, uh, Ricky, those top guys, it doesn't matter what race, what condition, hot, cold, muddy, dry, yeah. slippery, sandy, they're yeah. always the guy to beat, right? right? And I always had certain tracks. Right. Uh, I think I look back on it just knowing my riding style or tracks I float on. Yeah. I excelled on and other ones I was a little off. But certain guys always has had it. 
but getting sidetracked. I had a great off season. I actually Garden won that little world supercross championship, oh, okay. All right. which was like a lot of guys ran. Yeah. Yep. And then going into 98, uh, feeling good, got yep. on the podium, then broke my femur. So those so, three, that, every those time you three. had it going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what did me yep. in, three yep. years of injuries. I will tell you something you probably don't know. So I bench race with Stu a lot now. Yes. In between commercials and all this stuff. He holds your style right up there. Oh. Like, and not just like looks cool, but like technically doing it right. James Stewart. Yeah. Okay. He's like, you know who you know gets brought up who really does it right? It's like Damon Huffman was unreal. Oh, that's so, cool. That's yeah. really cool so, to hear. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you a little insight. Okay. Jimmy Weiner. Yep. When uh, we were up on the couch, yep. he, he leaned over and whispered in my ear, you were the most like naturally gifted supercross rider I've ever seen. No way. Hey. I'm like, yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, really, really cool. Uh, I don't know why. It, that was just my style. Um, yeah, yeah. And again, it it always, I was always giving it my all, even though. Yes. Oh, because you're one of those guys not, that looked like yes. if he would hang it out more. Yeah. Because you were so smooth. Yeah. But you happened. were hanging it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, that happens. So, they said that. They'll say that about Jet someday. They'll say the same exact thing someday. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of guys, you know, maybe when. Wyndham, they said it. Rainer. Yep. Rainer, they said it. Uh, yep. So, yep. I don't, it's not, it's not a bad thing. Yeah. 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 No, you look good. Yeah. Stu appreciates Thank it too. Thank you for the time. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I'm telling you, I've been wanting to say my whole life. That 90s night. look. Okay, we'll keep hooking it up. Damon Huffman, one of my heroes back in the 90s. Even in the Cowie days was good. This is uh, the, the new bike. They haven't shown this in person. We had a press release of photos uh, a couple months ago. And, but the big story is the bike's already established itself with Roman Fevre winning like, I don't know, I think he won five out of six GPs uh, at one point with a late season rally. So that's essentially that bike that he's racing in MXGP a year early. Oh, Jimmy Weiner going to the top. So look, how he pulled out all the stops, man. They even brought out the jammer. All right, jammer, give me your history here. I knew you were the 76 Supercross champ, but I did not know where you actually clinched that title. Okay. Well, Jason, 72, I was here for the first race. You okay. Uh, 73, I had a little incident coming out of the peristyle. Oh, it does happen. Oh, I was digging for, well, digging than in one now, but uh, <laughs> 75, I got second here. 76, I wrapped up the uh, championship for Kawasaki. Yes. Come back to next year, 77, won the Super Bowl of motocross. And, so you finally uh, got the win here in 77. Got the win here yeah. in 77, but I came out with the number one plate first time for Supercross, and that became the championship then. Yes, uh, you mentioned something I did not know. We, we Jimmy Ellis, was that the year before? Was that 75? 75, yes. But they were not having a number one plate Supercross guy? No, they weren't. So you were the first guy to have the number one plate for a full season. Yes, I was riders yes. rep. I told yep. the AMA there's a lot of confusion, but long story short, I said, make this a series. Yeah. Guy comes out with number one plate. Everyone knows and understand who the number one guy yes. is. Fortunately for me, it worked out. You didn't know it was gonna be you. <laughs> no, didn't know it. How did I know? Yes, you know, exactly. Until the end of that night, and I come yeah. back in 77 with the number one plate. And now all the guys have benefited from bonuses and championship, mm -hmm. everything. So it worked out well for everybody. Yeah, Supercross has done okay. The this, this series itself, too. Well, what yeah. I see right now, from 72 yeah. to now, yeah. I'm proud of everybody. We've all pushed for this, yep. and now these young riders, they're here, the stars. Yep. They're getting famous. Yep. And they can ride a damn dirt bike, okay? Yeah. Yeah. You don't take anything away from them. Oh no. 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 <laughs> but you had a couple people mention that they respect what yeah. you did. Yes. Yeah. You said seen Cerullo, for example. Uh, yep. Cerullo, uh, Jason Anderson, yep. Damon Bradshaw. Yeah. I can't remember anybody, but it was just. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, so many people coming up. We came here because of you, and I know they come for other people too. But yeah, it made me feel really good. Last thing about racing here. So that 72 race that you did. Yes. What did everybody think before it? Did you think it was nuts, crazy, smart? Do you remember what you were thinking coming into that first ever race here? Well, I think we all said, well, in the stadium, this, okay, whatever, it, we'll, we'll race, we'll race. Yeah. But the sales pitch was people could come from work. They go right yes. to the stands. We yes. got refreshments. You got clean bathrooms. Yes. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. But yeah, we were what the hell is going on? But yes. it, it worked out. Did you after start thinking like, oh man, this might be the future here? Did anyone have that early? Well, 
as I got further on in my career, yeah, and your companies, whether it's you know, well, mine being Kawasaki, yes, Supercross, where the money is, the yes, and the publicity, sure, and that's what they're promoting, and even today, oh yeah. You could be a number one Supercross rider for three or four years and get fifth or sixth in the outdoor nationals. You got a ride for life. You're still doing all right. And, yes, and exactly. And it's okay to get that fifth or sixth, but as long as you keep winning here, yep. this is the big deal. But did you sense that in 72, 3, 4? Or no. was it like kind of a spectacle at that time? No, no it was still no. a spectacle because I think yeah. well, we had one that year, I think, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. But right. Then the next year, a little bit more, but then it just it exploded. <laughs> well, more people got involved. Yes. More uh, promoters. It's just, yes. you know. But now we know we had the first number one plate, the Thank jammer. You, Jason. All right, Jimmy Weiner. Yeah, I, I was good to be able to talk to somebody who actually raced the first one here. Good job getting Jimmy Weiner here, raced the first event. I mean, that's really good to have that perspective. Uh, we'll wrap this show up. Uh, there's so much history in this building. Yes, did you, Ken. Did you capture all of the the winners that we had? No, because Wardy, I was doing rehearsal. Oh, I, I saw Wardy on his way out. Okay, so Wardy, 87. Yes, tell me who else you got. Weiner, 77. Yes. Uh, chicken, twice. Chicken, twice. We saw Chicken on the motorcycle. And yep. then, um, who was the last one? There's one more. Shoot, I had it. In between? In between. Oh, and then Oh, 20. Emig. Emig. You had Emig, right? Emig was here. No, we did. I'm just talking LA wins. LA oh, oh, literally wins. winning in this building. In this building. Oh, that's what you're talking about. In this oh, building. okay. Yes. Oh, that's rad. Yeah. Oh. So it's the history within we the history. Here, yeah. We were one two with Tortelli and Emig. <laughs> That's a big trivia question. Yeah, right? The 98 Tortelli win. Uh, one thing, and I will let you shout this from the mountaintops. I know this stat, and they said it on the big video. The most titles in this sport. Correct. It's Kawasaki. Correct. Yeah. Yep. yep. The most, most combined yeah, championships. Of the National Motocross Championship and Supercross. Yep. It's Kawasaki. Right. But then I, I tell people that. They're like, really? And I'm like, think about the line from Ward all the way through now. There are very rarely bad years. Like, Cowie's had a runner every year. Everybody else has ups and downs. Yeah. That's how you pile up the numbers. And then you the four-stroke era, especially with the yeah. circuit, was yes. so dominant early. Right? Yes. We had yep. every tile, east, west, outdoors. Yep. yep. So that racked up some serious numbers yes. in consecutive years. So. And you even had uh, Kudrowski and Rocco here? Correct. That was Kudrowski, cool. Rocco, Huffman. Uh, Hughes? Ryan Hughes? Ryan Hughes was ah, here. That's awesome. Yeah. Brad Lackey. Brad Lackey. Yeah. Oh. Oh, as O O G as a winer. Oh, that's good. Well Actually, done. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say. You got one more. Trivia. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Brad Lackey's first yeah. championship. Yep. On a Kawasaki, but yep. is not a KX. Predated the KX brand. No way. Yes. So wow. Weiner is actually the first KX champ. <laughs> but you recognize Brad Lackey, Lackey anyway. But Lackey is a, you do still recognize. a Cowie. He's still a Cowie. What Cowie was he even called? Do you know? It was called the F12. No way. Yeah. <laughs> is that in... Uh, it was basically a prototype. That's in your heritage yes. thing. Yes, yes I've seen that. Yeah, so it, it, was, it was basically the prototype before the KX the brand KX. And model was developed. Yeah. Wow. All right, another 50th. I'm going to go check it. I just learned that. Uh, that's Ken Essex, uh, Kawasaki PR. They put this together. And what this all ties into, Yamaha, the 50th. 50th anniversary livery they showed on the all new YZ250F here last night. Kawasaki celebrating their 50th anniversary. Uh, they even painted the box van in the old school team green colors. And they got a 50th anniversary bike now, just like Yamaha does. Remember, Honda had a 50th anniversary bike last year. It was 50 years of the Pro Motocross Championship last year. This was actually the 50th Supercross Championship this year, but they felt that it would be impossible to both celebrate 50 years of Supercross and launch SMX. That's a lot of information coming at everybody at one time. So there will be a, we've had 50 years of Supercross celebration coming in 2024, I believe. What does this all mean? It's it's all the same. It's either one year or the next. Basically, it's 50 years or 51 for all the top teams, the factories, the racers, the sport, the history. But for the most part, the main thing is that it started here. There is no doubt. Motocross is a sport we talk about. We recognize it as a sport of motocross. But having a race in this building in 1972 and taking motocross to the masses is what truly launched this sport to the large level that it is now with the amount of money the riders can make and the amount of people that go into these stands and people like me being able to have jobs in the industry because it grew so much because they held a race in this building. That's a really cool little full circle moment. We'll see you tomorrow.